First of all, we would wish to make some comments on the statement made recently by our Cabinet Minister of Trade regarding GMOs. We want to pay particular exception of uh, how the Cabinet Minister has addressed Kenyans in this matter. We feel it was distasteful and disrespectful to the Kenyans to joke about life and death. And even if it is an issue which could be taken as a joke, it would be wrong to bring about statements whereby we trivialize death, trivialize suffering, trivialize insecurity. For this reason, we feel, irrespective of the matter in case, in consideration, would request honestly that the Kenyans deserve respect and not spite and in this matter they do deserve an apology. It is not good to joke with death or to gamble with the life of Kenyans as if it was Russian Rode. For this reason we feel this matter is more than just a joke when we speak about GMOs it's a serious matter that deserves discussion, deep, sober engagement. It's not on one hand a decision for us to, on one hand, just embrace them whole heart completely without any reservation, nor a situation where we want to reject the use or even to address the need that could be for a specific time. It's a matter of discussion a matter of engagement and respectful strategic engagement. For that, we call for a good moment of engagement by government, by the agriculture, agricultural expert, by food experts, so that we may find the right path. We understand we may need for a momentary relief to go towards embracing the feeding of our people with food that may be, in fact, GMO. But that's not the solution. We need to address the deep-seated issues. As a bridge, yes, but as a long-term solution, we need to address what is it that ails Kenya and what is it that ails us to make us not food sufficient. So for this reason, we, the Catholic bishops, have spoken about this matter, saying we need to engage, we need to speak. The Catholic bishops speaking in Mombasa express this desire. Therefore, let us engage soberly. Let us remember that when you are a leader, you are meant to convince the Kenyans. You are not meant to spite them. Don't take the Kenyans for granted. Let's respect the people we lead. Let's treat them with the respect due and their dignity. I feel that we must address this issue from a matter of food sufficiency at a deeper level in many ways and we have said it in the statement that the Kenyan Catholic bishops made two weeks ago in Mombasa. We must address the issues of improved agricultural methods. We have to look at the sustained support to agriculture. We have to look at how we keep harvest storage and grain storage. And in this context we'll be able to be food sufficient and plan for adversity, plan for moments when rains may fail. It is in this light also we must address the issue. If the tank is leaking, it doesn't matter how much water we put into the tank. How is it that we are losing all this food storage? How is it that the food is not reaching right to the end who people who need and at this moment are faced by calamity? So this current famine, we believe, is a result of poor strategy and planning generally that in our country we have been crisis managing and not planning properly. We urge all Kenyans, all experts in food, in logistics, in agriculture, let's put our minds together. That's what we need to discuss so as to find the right path, how and how much of GMO engagement will we go to? How much will we focus on the production? How much will we focus on other areas, storage? And even how do we focus especially to water harvesting, the runoff? All those are the conditions, the, what we should be discussing in an open forum. 
bringing all the experts and minds that we have in our nation to find solution. We shouldn't trivialize serious matters like food security or GMO or farming. It is not an instrument that we use for the moment of rhetoric. It is the lives of people which are at stake. Consequently, we would want to urge that, like the Catholic bishop said, a multi-sectoral collaboration in the distribution of the food that is meant to be relief for those who are faced famine. A multi-sectoral, because corruption is a big issue that makes agriculture non-profitable and that makes even this famine and assistance and relief not completely uh, realize efficiency. So we are asking, let's join together, churches, FBOs, and others, so that really this food that we are giving those who are faced with famine reaches them, so that we can have a well-secured distribution system where the food, famine food, is not found in the markets for sale. That not a few individuals take advantage of the food that has been distributed that the real suffering Kenyan may benefit. Finally, I would like to urge all Kenyans, let us be generous. Let us be generous to help our brother and sister. Let us not just stand by, give the little contribution you have, give the little food, using whichever avenue of famine relief you feel comfortable with. Give even using your churches, your places of worship. We have here in Nyeri started the hope for you the initiative helping those who are very needy. But you as a Kenyan, you can do something with your neighbors, in your community, in your churches, in whatever, but don't sit watching our brothers and sisters suffering. We appeal yet again for the generosity of Kenyans because these are our brothers and sisters. Give what you have, God will bless you. Remember, when we discuss about life, put God at the center, do not trivialize it. Do not play with people's lives, even if it's one person. And that is why whenever we hear the loss of lives, just now we've had about an accident that has had uh, some two children who have been unfortunately lost their lives, hit by a vehicle. We always feel those are two lives, one life too many to lose. Let's not joke with people's lives. Let's not trivialize it. And we kindly ask respectfully that our cabinet secretary come out and ask apology in order to give back dignity to the Kenyan people. Thank you and God bless you.